My people are destroyed from the lack of knowledge. We do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this age, against spiritual hosts of wickedness in the heavenly places. Through one man sin entered the earth, and death through sin. Death spread to all men because all sin from birth. Without the shedding of blood, nothing is forgiven. Look, the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world was given and hidden and swaddling clothes in a manger. The Word became flesh and made His dwelling among us. The glory of the one and only Son, full of grace and truth. This is how we know what love is. Jesus Christ laid down His life for men. And we ought to lay down our lives for our fellow kin. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind. This is the first and greatest commandment. And the second is like it, requiring mankind to love your neighbor as yourself. We are under the new covenant by the Savior's blood. By calling this covenant new, he has made the first one obsolete because the law brings wrath. Where there is no law, there is no transgression. If there are no rules, then there are no consequences for fools. For all who rely on the works of the law are under a curse. You are not under the law, but under grace. Christ bought us back from slavery to sin, the curse of the law, by becoming a curse for men. We died to the law through the body of Christ, so that we might belong to another, so that we might bear fruit for God and save many brothers. The blood of Christ will cleanse our consciences from acts that lead to death. Therefore, love is the fulfillment of the law. His love guides our steps. There is now no condemnation, no guilt, no shame for those who are in Christ Jesus. Through him, the law of the Spirit has set you free to be who he made you to be. There is no fear in love. So cast all your anxiety on him. For we have peace with God. And you will rejoice. No one will take away your joy. Our God will meet all your needs. Declare with your mouth, Jesus is Lord. Believe in your heart, God raised him from the dead. You will be saved. What more could we ask for? He will live in our heart. Heaven is our reward. Christ is the mediator of a new covenant, a go-between. He died as a ransom to set them free from the sins committed under the First Testament. He did not enter heaven to offer himself again and again. Otherwise, Christ would have to have suffered many times since the creation of the world. But he has appeared once for all to do away with sin by the sacrifice of himself. Christ was sacrificed once to take away the sins of many. He will appear a second time not to bear sin, but to bring salvation to those who are waiting for him. By one sacrifice, he has made perfect forever those who are being made holy. The Holy Spirit also testifies to us about his story. This is the covenant I will make. I will put my laws in their hearts. I will write them on their minds. Their sins and lawless acts I will remember no more. And where these have been forgiven, sacrifice for sin is no longer necessary. Therefore, brothers and sisters, we have confidence to enter the most holy place by the blood of Jesus, a new and living way open for us to cleanse us from a guilty conscience and having our bodies washed. You also were included in Christ when you heard the message of truth. When you believed, you were marked to him with the seal promise Holy Spirit. Whoever believes in the Son of God accepts this testimony. Whoever does not believe God has made him out to be a liar. Whoever does not believe will be thrown into the lake of fire. If they have escaped the corruption of the world by knowing our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and are again entangled in it and overcome, they are worse off at the end than they were at the beginning. If we deliberately keep on sinning after we have received the knowledge of the truth, no sacrifice for sins is left only a fearful expectation of judgment the axe is already laid at the root. How much more severely do you think someone deserves to be punished who has trampled the Son of God underfoot, who has treated as an unholy thing the blood of the covenant that sanctified them, and who has insulted the spirit of grace? Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they do. They have deliberately sinned in their face. Christ died for our sins. He took our infirmities, bore our sicknesses, bore our sins in his own body on the tree, that we, having died to sins, might live for righteousness, by whose stripes you were healed to live free. By his power, God raised the Lord from the dead, and he will raise us also. 
those he predestined. He also called those he called. He also justified those he justified. He also glorified. He chose us before the creation of the world to be holy and blameless in his sight and love. Jesus says, you did not choose me, but I chose you so that you might go and bear fruit, fruit that will last. And so whatever you ask in my name, the Father will give you, he will do. God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and power. John bore witness saying, I saw the Spirit descending from heaven like a dove, and he remained upon him, and now his Spirit is ours. Jesus said, all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. All things that the Father has are mine. No I, only you, the Holy Trinity. God said, in our image, according to our likeness, let them have dominion over all the earth. I give you authority over all the power of the enemy, and his incomparably great power for us who believe it is ours. That power is the same as the mighty strength he exerted when he raised Christ from the dead. That same power changes men. When Christ we receive the spirit of adoption and our heirs of God, joint heirs with Christ. He redeemed us in order that the blessing given to Abraham might come to the Gentiles through Christ Jesus, so that by faith we might receive the promise of the Spirit. Work while there is light. You are heirs according to the promise. I will give you the keys of the kingdom. So Christ himself gave to equip his people for works of service, so that the body of Christ may be built up and freely given, until we all reach unity in the faith and in the knowledge of the Son of God, becoming mature, attaining to the whole measure of the fullness of Christ. To each one of us grace was given, according to the measure of Christ's gift. I tell you, whoever believes in me will do the works I've been doing, and they will do even greater things than these. The blind receive sight, the lame walk, those who have leprosy are cleansed, the deaf hear, the dead are raised, and the good news is proclaimed to the poor. But that's not all I have given even more. Truly I tell you, if anyone says to this mountain, go throw yourself into the sea, and does not doubt in their heart, but believes that what they say will happen, it will be done for these. Heal the sick, raise the dead, cleanse those who have leprosy, drive out demons. Freely you will receive, freely give as your daily bread. For the kingdom of God is not a matter of talk, but of power. I will do whatever you ask in my name, so that the Father may be glorified in the Son. His name is a strong tower. The weapons we fight with are not the weapons of this world. On the contrary, they have divine power to demolish strongholds. Know this love that surpasses knowledge, that you may be filled to the measure of all the fullness of God. Be bold. In his fullness, we have all received. Love has been perfected among us. As he is, so are we in this world. Whoever claims to live in him must live as Jesus did, every man, woman, boy, and girl. We have the mind of Christ. In love, we are here in this world. In him, you have been enriched in every way with all kinds of speech and with all knowledge, I pray. He was rich, yet for your sake he became poor, so that you, through his poverty, might become rich. It is for him we live for. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. You will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you. The Spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead is living in you, and in my name he will teach you all things. God gives the Spirit without a name. Now about the gifts of the Spirit, brothers and sisters, I do not want you to be ignorant. There are different kinds of gifts, but the same Spirit distributes them. There are different kinds of working, but in every one it is the same God at work living grace. To each one, the manifestation of the Spirit is given wisdom, knowledge, faith, gifts of healing, miraculous powers, prophecy, distinguishing between spirits, speaking in different kinds of tongues, and to still another the interpretation of those tongues. All these are the work of one and the same Spirit. Now, eagerly desire the greater gifts. My brothers and sisters, be eager to prophesy, and do not forbid speaking in tongues. And these signs will accompany those who believe. In my name they will drive out demons, they will speak in tongues, they will pick up snakes with their hands, and when they drink deadly poison, it will not hurt them. They will place their hands on sick people and they will get well, not with wise and persuasive words, but with a demonstration of the Spirit's power. With man, this is impossible, but with God, all things are possible. If I cast out demons by the Holy Spirit, surely the kingdom of God is near. If we seek his kingdom, then these things will be given to you as well. If you have faith as small as a mustard seed, you can say to this mountain, move from here to there, and they will be moved into the sea. Nothing will be impossible for you. Whatever you ask for in prayer, believe that you have received it, and this I will do. Don't think of yourself more highly than you might, but rather think of yourself with sober judgment. What goes into someone's mouth does not defile them, 
but what comes out of their mouth, that is what defiles them and makes them unclean. Those who humble themselves will be exalted. When you pray, do not keep on babbling like pagans, for they think they will be heard because of their many words. Do not be like them, for your Father knows what you need before you ask Him. This is how you should pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And do not lead us into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. And pray in the spirit on all occasions with all kinds of prayers and requests. If I pray in the tongue, my spirit prays. Not in words taught by human wisdom, but words taught by the spirit. This is the confidence we have in approaching God. That if we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. God is faithful. He said, I will never leave you, nor forsake you. Now it is required that those who have been given a trust must prove faithful. Does God give you a spirit and work miracles among you by the works of the law or by your believing what you heard? Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Faith without works is dead. Follow the way of love and eagerly desire the gifts of the spirit. Now the fruit of the spirit is this, love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Against such, there is no law. There is neither Jew nor Gentile, neither slave nor free, nor is there male and female, for you are all one in Christ Jesus. We are therefore Christ's ambassadors, as though God were making his appeal through us. You are a letter from Christ, the result of our ministry, written not with ink, but with the spirit of the living God, not on tablets of stone, but on tablets of human hearts. Go into all the world and preach the gospel to all creation. I am sending you out like sheep among wolves. Therefore be as shrewd as snakes and as innocent as doves. The Lord worked with them and confirmed his word by the signs that accompanied them. Beware the leaven of the Pharisees, which is hypocrisy. Any kingdom divided against itself is laid waste, and any city or house divided against itself will not stand, having a form of godliness, but denying its power. Do not imitate what is evil, but what is good. Do not be yoked together with unbelievers. Do not deceive yourselves. If any of you think you are wise by the standards of this age, you should become fools so that you may become wise. You die with Christ to the elemental spiritual forces of this world. Why? As though you still belong to the world, do you submit to his rules? You have let go of the commands of God and are holding on to human traditions. Thus, you nullify the word of God by your inhibitions. Are you not in error because you do not know the scriptures or the power of God? Submit yourselves then to the king. Resist the devil and he will flee. God chose the foolish things of the world to shame the wise. If we are out of our mind, as some say, it is for God. Whoever has my commands and keep them is the one who loves me. The one who loves me will be loved by my Father. I, too, will love them and show myself to them. Examine yourself to see whether you are in the faith. Test yourselves. Do you not realize that Christ Jesus is in you? He who is in you is greater than he who is in the world. He is the one we proclaim, admonishing and teaching everyone with all wisdom, so that we may present everyone fully mature in Christ as precious pearls. These are the things God has revealed to us by his spirit. Now that you know these things, you will be blessed if you do them. Doers of the word and not hearers only. In all these things, we are more than conquerors. If God is for us, who can be against us? Jesus, full of joy, through the Holy Spirit said, I praise you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, because you have hidden these things from the wise and learned and revealed the word of God in its fullness, the mystery that has been kept hidden for ages and generations is now disclosed to the Lord's people, the glorious riches of this mystery, which is Christ in you. He said to me, it is done. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the ending to the thirsty. I will give water without cost from the spring of the water of life. I pray that out of his glorious riches, he may strengthen you with power through his spirit. Do not neglect the gift that is in you. Only let us live up to what we have already attained. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Finally, be strong in the Lord and in his mighty power. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday and today and forever. Amen.